Uh, Talk to us about moving yeah. from being a forward to midfield and establishing your position there then. Yep, so I played a lot of centre-forward, number 10, I suppose, as well. Um, just wasn't quick enough, wasn't strong enough. Um, wasn't wasn't tall enough. Bit of everything. I, I had an eye for goal, and as a kid, going through all the youth teams, I, I just score goals all the time. I love scoring goals. Um, and obviously, Eric had it uh, mark that I'd be a, a midfield player for quite some time. I never thought, like I said before, that I, I really would have the energy to do that. But Did you want to? Are you, are you were you apprehensive? Yeah. yeah. No, I, you'd play anywhere, wouldn't you? And I think it's lucky back, it's probably the best thing that happened because I think having been brought up as a centre forward as well and scoring goals all the time, that obviously helped going back into midfield. Mm-hmm. That I still, wanted I still forward, wanted to yeah. score goals. I still wanted to get forward as much as I can. Sometimes whoever I was playing with weren't too happy with that, but you just have to do that. And I, I wasn't positionally, I wasn't great for like a defensive midfielder. I wasn't, I didn't like people behind me and. You know, trying to pick people up, but I always have people next to me who were brilliant at that. Nicky Bourne and Roy Key, Michael Carrick was unbelievable. Just played the position really well. Where I was a bit more of a, a bit more of a loose cannon all over the place. It's really funny you say that because obviously on the back of your book that you released, there's a load of quotes from former players, players you played against, and I mean, so Bobby Charlton and Sir Alex Ferguson. But on that, Pep Guardiola says you were the most complete midfielder of your generation. Zinedine Zidane says. There was no better central midfielder than you in his generation. Javi says exactly the same thing. The most complete central midfielder is you, whereas you think not at all. I just made all them up. I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no proof that I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, of course, when when you hear people say that, it's nice, isn't it? These are these really were the best players. Xavi and Zidane, Guardiola was brilliant as well at Barcelona. So yeah, it's obviously nice, don't you? Try and not what was your mindset playing against Sam? Playing against who? Xavi, Iniesta, Zidane and... <laughs> Let's finish it. Yeah. <laughs> Please get to the end. Unscathed. Yeah. Yeah, they were brilliant, weren't they? It's, you know, that, that Barcelona team was... So it's just... You shouldn't really go out thinking damage limitation, but you thought... Even in the team this, you was in? Even the team was... Well, we thought we could score goals. We thought we, thought we could yeah. win games against them, but I think the later teams that they had, the Guardiola teams, they were, they were unreal, weren't they? That's just that... Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, Messi, just everywhere you looked, it was just... Did you have a favourite opposition? Favourite opposition to play against? Mm-hmm. I scored a, go- a lot of goals against Newcastle. I think that was a team I always felt. I don't know why. Love playing yeah. up there as well. It was a great ground, yeah. wasn't it? Great ground, great atmosphere. And for some reason, I, I seem to score a lot of goals against them. What about in Europe then? Sorry, Sam. Go ahead. Um, was it Barcelona or...? Yeah, you love playing in them stadiums, don't you? Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich at the time. Um, you know, just to be a part of them games. They're massive games. The, the size of the clubs is just... You don't get any better games than that. It's, no. it's not always the most enjoyable, but you know, they're the big games you want to be involved in. One thing we should talk about that I guess would have been influenced by your relationship with Sir Alex is your return from retirement. How did that come about? Because we spoke to Ashley Young on the podcast about it and he said none of the players knew about it up until they saw the shirt. But he also said he offered you your squad number back. Is that true? He's left the club now, so you can say what you want. But I don't think he did. <laughs> I would have had it back. <laughs> um, no, I don't think he did. Okay. I liked Ash. I was a nice lad. Um, he obviously didn't like me, though, did he, that much? <laughs> no, he didn't offer me. But um, what happened? First team was struggling. I spoke to Phil Neville and, and, and Gary Neville about it. And I was nervous about doing it. I, I went to see Mick Phelan first. I think I got to a training ground about seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sleep. <laughs> what am I going to say? Um, I said, Mick, I, I, I think I'm coming back playing again. Um, and I, I, at the time, I wasn't necessarily meaning for United. I just meant for anyone. Cause yeah. I, ju- I just wanted to play again because I didn't think. You know, a club like this, last thing you need to a lad who's nearly 37 and he wants to come back and play. Um, and Mick, obviously, because the squad was struggling, the team was struggling, he said, I think it's a great idea, go and see the manager. So, um, Will you come with me? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bring a few in with me, please. Um, so, uh, again, nervous, I'm not sure how, it, how, how it's going to go. Um, so I wait for the manager to get in. This must be like eight, half eight in the morning now. I went to see him and said, look, manager, I just want to play again, I feel... I feel okay. Um and I think I actually said to him, so look, if if you don't want me that's fine, I'll 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 play for anyone and I think Phil was at Everton at Everton mm-hmm. at the time and he said, Look, come and play for us if if they don't want you to play. Um 
and I tell you what, within 30 seconds, he was on the phone to David Gill to sort the contract out. That was pretty graphic. Yeah, it was quick. Yeah, and the rest of it, I, I carried on training, training with the reserves after that for a, a week or so. Um, and the manager says, look, we just won't tell anybody, we'll, we'll keep it secret. And I was due to play for the reserves against Newcastle, I think it was on the we- Tuesday or Wednesday before we was playing City mm-hmm. in the FA Cup. Um, but it got called off, so I couldn't play. I ended up then, I trained with the first team on the, the day before a game, but still had my coach's kit on and stuff. It was just like a... Yeah, you needed so none a, of them were saying... No, it was like you needed an extra body and stuff, so... Yeah. I still had my PS with my, my coaching kit. So I trained with them on a Saturday morning. And the manager said, just come to the hotel and act as if you're a coach, really. I don't know why I didn't want to tell them. I, I don't know what the big... Probably big... didn't want the spotlight on you, did you, everybody? That's yeah, about, yeah, possibly. I remember Johnny saying, actually, that they were just like... Yeah, we just thought he was getting on the bus yeah. and like yeah. coming to the hotel. And <laughs> nobody genuinely had a clue until well, the changing I think the there. psychology behind that secret is... Unbelievable lift for United. One of the most successful central midfielders of all time is going to play, and a hammer blow from Manchester City to see your name on the team sheet. None of them would have gone. I'm not sure it was a hammer blow for them. <laughs> it was three and a lot when I went on. It was three two after ten minutes <laughs> against ten men. <laughs> they were rubbing their hands. Somebody said that you just went to a local shop and just picked a pair of boots. Off. Yeah, I did. And do you know what, Johnny? It was your Johnny who spotted. Um, I had to go to you know, DW in Oldham. Yeah. The, the retail part of where I had to go and buy a pair of boots because I couldn't, we couldn't tell Nike um, and the coaches boots they gave us weren't, weren't great so I had to go and buy a pair I think they were 50, 60 quid or something <laughs> <laughs> so everybody knows and I get to the ground my, my, my shirt's up mm-hmm. and I said I knew it I knew it Danny Welbeck I think said I knew it I knew you was coming back and you're still you're just embarrassed aren't you is everyone looking at me they're thinking yeah. what's he doing is he a why is he coming back um, so I put my boots on we go out for the warm up and Johnny's next to me warming up he said are they them cheap boots you bought <laughs> <laughs> I said what do you mean a 50, 60 quid though he said no you bought the snide ones expensive taste you see here yeah. bought the snide ones <laughs> he said yeah you bought the snide ones um, they were like plastic they were the same colours as the real ones but yeah. they are just a little bit of plastic um, so Johnny Johnny had me, had me for that <laughs> 